everyone, welcome back to my craft room for another special episode of A Stitch in Time. For those who don't know me, my name is Carol. You can find me over on Ravelry as Knits and Pearls. And if you're watching, chances are you found my YouTube channel where I host a mostly weekly podcast where I talk mostly about knitting, sometimes about sewing and quilting, and very occasionally about my needlework. To put things in context, I'm filming this on Tuesday, uh, April 7th, 2020, but I'm not going to be airing it until later this week. So at the beginning of the year, I joined the 20 and 20 challenge that is being hosted by Lisa of Fiber Nymph Dye Works over in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group on Ravelry. And I made a list of 20 things I wanted to accomplish knitting-wise for the year. And since it's, uh, we've now finished the first quarter, I thought it'd be a good time to go back over my list, uh, see what I've accomplished, and review it and see if there was anything I wanted to add or take off the list. Um, about a week and a half ago, I went through uh, the vast majority of my hibernating works in progress and made some decisions about whether to finish or frog those projects. And I filmed a lot of it um, in another special episode, and that can be found on my YouTube channel if you're interested. So I, not surprisingly, I have um, been influenced by that experience when it comes to making plans for the rest of the year. I did frog a huge number of projects, but I also saved a few from the frog pond and um, I'm set on finishing them up, if not this year, um, at least at some point. So what I thought I would do first of all is just sort of review what I had written down in my original list and then talk about plans for this year. I'm going to take a little sip of water here before I get going. So the first project on my list was the um, Sailing School Socks by Helen Stewart. This is the uh, fifth pattern in her Handmade Sock Society collection. And I had cast these on, I think it was October of 2019. So that was my number one priority, was to finish these up. So as you can see, I did accomplish that. So one, check. <laughs> and um, I have one more pattern from that collection still to knit, and that's the um, dorsal socks. That is the sixth and final pattern from that collection. And I'm pleased to say that I have completed one whole sock. It has a really nice um, thin pattern that runs up the back of the leg. And I have since uh, cast on the second sock, done the cuff, and a little bit of the first pattern repeat. So um, I am going to uh, keep these socks on my list going forward, obviously because they're already, you know, more than half done. Another project that I was on my list that I had not started, whoops, just about lost it, been there. I've got a chair right in front of me, piled high with things. Um, so one project, I had bought the yarn for this in the fall after uh, Knit City in Vancouver. Um, I came home I, and I ordered it from uh, Midnight Cravings Yarn Company because they didn't have any in stock at the show. And I um, wanted to knit Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. And as you can see, I did accomplish that. I was really, really pleased with how this turned out and very happily have crossed that one off my list too. Another pattern that I wanted to knit, another sweater, was The Weekender by um, Andrea Mallory. And I also finished that up by... Um, I can't remember if, it, if I finished it this year or, yes, it would have been this year, of course, it's 20 and 20. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, I finished that this year. So uh, I've got two sweaters that are all done. So that feels pretty good. Two sweaters in three months is quite an accomplishment. And besides that, I had um, a uh, pair of plain stockinette socks out of yarn from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. Another goal this year is to participate in her um, monthly makes program. So my ideal goal is to knit six items out of Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn. Uh, I'm not sure if that'll happen, but I do have one to my credit so far. So there's my winter comfort socks. And then another thing on the list was to knit um, this yarn up by Biscott uh, Yarn Company. Uh, this colorway is called Mon Pays C'est l'hiver. And as you can see, I have finished those up too. So out of the five things on my, or excuse me, out of the 20 things that were on my list, I've actually finished um, five of them. So another project that I, um, now, now I'm just going to be a lot of reaching and pulling and rattling around just to warn you. So another project that was on my list were the uh, Songbird, Songbird Mittens by Erica Huser. And I did knit one mitten. So as you can see, uh, it needs a mate. And so I am going to keep this on my uh, list going forward also. And I have plans to knit up the um, second mitten. Okay, let's look down the list here. Oh yes, one other thing that I've been working on is um, I wanted to design a shawl this year. And I purchased a uh, set of minis from Sweet Georgia Yarns in the Tofino Road Trip colorway. And I have been working on designing a shawl. This is my first iteration. I am not 100% happy with it. I'm planning to rip out this and do something a little different here. And once I figure all that out, I am going to take it right back to the beginning and start all over again and, and write up the pattern. But um, I feel pretty good to be well on my way to accomplishing that goal too. So out of 20 um, things, then I have completed five and I have a three on the go. So I think that's a pretty good record. I'm very satisfied with that. I don't make plans for the year every year as far as knitting goes, but um, this year it just felt right. And so I'm, I'm happy to have, have done that. <laughs> I'm just looking for surfaces to put things on. What's that gonna pop out of frame here? So, um, the other things that were on my list were um, to knit five more skeins of Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn to be determined, um, to knit uh, this skein of yarn by West Yorkshire Spinners, it's their Christmas Robin colorway, or just Robin colorway. So what I'm going to do is actually um, it's spring and the robins have reappeared and so that's going to be my next stockinette socks that go on the needle. So this one is obviously staying on my list uh, for 2020. That'll be my next uh, plain cast on because I don't have any plain socks on the needles right now. Um, oh, they are, again, right back. <laughs> Another thing on the list was to knit up some sweet fiber yarn uh, that I had purchased. So um, I don't want to take things away out too much. Um, I had three skeins in the driftwood colorway. Let me see if I can scooch that up to the camera. It's kind of an oatmeal-y grayish color. And I had bought a set of minis that I thought together with with the uh, plain yarn would make a nice color work sweater. It can be a little bit hard to see in this bag, I'm afraid. 
so earlier this year I um, started to knit the um, hinterland sweater by Jennifer Steingas. Terrible copy, but it looks something like that. And I experimented with uh, working the color work up in different colors of the minis and finally came up with an order that I like. However, once I reached the end of the color work part, the yoke was a little bit too deep and I wasn't 100% happy with my color work. So I have frogged the entire uh, project, but I do have plans to cast it on again, um, work the color work uh, in a little bit smaller needle. I'm going to go down one one needle size from what I did in the first place and I have high hopes for that sweater. So this this yarn is remaining on the list and it now has an actual project associated with it. I'm just gonna again find a place to put that. <laughs> um, I have several special skeins that were gifts that I wanted to knit this year. One is this skein of string theory. Another is the skein from uh, Zen Yarn Garden. And then um, this skein from uh, Riverstone Yarns. Now I have, I'm going to keep these yarns separate in this bin here with my 20 and 20 projects, but I have officially taken them off the 20 and 20 list, which doesn't mean they won't get added back in. It's just once I reviewed all the projects I wanted to accomplish, um, they didn't fit on the list anymore. But there's nothing to say I can't do 24 or 28 or 30 in 20. I'm just going to just officially take them off the list for now. Um, Another thing I have on there is to design a sock. Again, it is not on my new list, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Um, one other thing that I have taken off was to, um, I had worked, I had knit a, an entire um, papillon shawl. I did not put the designer's name down. And then I started a new one and I called Stained Glass Butterfly. And... Um, I have decided I wasn't happy with the order of the colors and I plan to take it all back and rework it anyway. And for now I've just I'm going to frog it and just take it right off the list. So that brings us to what have I added to my list? So the first thing is when I was going through all my hibernating works in progress. I came across this project um, back in, I think it was 2011. This book was very popular. It's called Knit Swirl by Sandra MacGyver. And it features these amazing sweaters that you begin by knitting, I think it would be a hexagon, and then you add in the, the sleeves and the back shaping and you end up sewing like one seam to complete a cardigan. And there are various shapes. There are centered, um, let's see if I can find the index here. It'll probably tell me really quickly the different shapes. Um, there are centered circles, centered ovals, off-center circles, and off-center ovals. And I remember when I got this book, I was so excited about it. And I ordered some Noro yarn to make um, this one called Stratosphere. And that's an off-center um, oval, I think. Or circle. Can't remember. Circle, I think. <laughs> There's another look at it. And you can also turn it upside down if you want and wear it like that. So I am not quite sure 
like a lot of um, my whips that end up being hibernating projects. I'm not sure why I stopped working on this. I do know that we went on a trip that fall. Um, I also know that I was, um, I know I was working on a little sweater for my grandson at the time. And for whatever reason, this project got put down and I don't think I've worked on it since. One reason might have been is that I was off a little bit on my count because um, after getting back into this and knitting for a while, doing some counting, I realized I was a little bit off it, but I fudged it and I think it'll be okay. So I picked this back up again on Saturday and I've just been knitting my heart out. So I've completed the whole outer hexagon area. Then I've been working up the back and now I'm working on the sleeves. So cast on extra stitches for the sleeves. This looks like um, a dog's breakfast at the moment, but um, I have high hopes for once it's blocked and sewn together. Um, it is such a joy to work on. It's just you work uh, welts of stockinette and reverse stockinette and just do what you're told welt by welt and a little magic happens. So I'm quite excited about picking this project back up. So that is definitely, that has definitely been added to my 20 and 20 list this year. Um, another project, if you watched um, my Finish or Frog It episode and the last regular episode, you will see I talked about this um, very beautiful summer shawl. The, I think it was 2000. It was the pattern from June 2008, part of the Year of Lace Yarn Club. And I pulled it out and I wasn't quite halfway. And my initial thought was I looked at the intricate lace and my first thought was, oh, I'm not even halfway. I am just going to frog it. There's no way I'm ever going to do it. It's knit on really tiny needles like 2.25 millimeter, I think. And I just, my first thought was, forget it. But when it came time to actually take it off the needles and frog it, I thought I should take a closer look and see if it's not something that maybe it's not as bad as I think. And since then, I've completed a whole um, pattern repeat of this um, leaf section which is 20 rows, and I've decided it's not so bad after all. And while it's not something I can work on every day, and it's not something I can work on while chit-chatting with uh, people, um, it's it's not so challenging that I want to, you know, throw my hands up and, and uh, yank it off the needles. So I have decided to uh, keep this going, and I've added it to my my project list for this year. Whether it actually gets finished this year or not is, a, is another thing because it is quite a time-consuming and challenging project, but I feel good about it at the very least having it on the to-do list and having revived it. Um, a very short time ago, so this is quite a new cast on, I cast on the Color Shifting Shawl by Jennifer Fish, and I thought this would be a great project to work on during this kind of crazy time when we need a perhaps want to turn to our knitting for some, uh, you know, soothing, mindless kind of uh, projects. So um, I did cast it on. I have worked that far, and, whoops, that far, and then I've recently abandoned it in favor of the Stratosphere sweater, uh, which offers a similar sort of soothing, somewhat mindless kind of knit. But this will definitely get picked back up again. Um, I love the colors, love how it's knitting up so far. and look forward to um, getting back to that one, actually. So the next few projects that I'm going to talk about are also um, long 
standing hibernating projects. And these are projects that I decided uh, to keep. So, um, similar to the very beautiful shawl, whether they get actually finished this year or not, I'm not sure, but I am keeping them as active works in progress and plan to at least work on them. So the first is the um, Arashi Shawl whoops, by Sarah Morris. This was also part of a different yarn club. Um, is that the, yeah, that's the right side. So it's in this beautiful, look at that gorgeous, gorgeous colored, um, I think it's alpaca silk, I think, if I remember right. It is just a gorgeous yarn, and how can I get that far and not finish it? And so this is definitely one that will get worked on again this year. Um, another thing I decided to keep, I have had these socks on the go for a few years, called The Vicar's Wife by Maureen Folds. I have one entire sock knit. I did this as part of an Agatha Christie along on my podcast, in my podcast group uh, for, I think it was, two, it's probably almost three years ago. They're very intricate, especially the back. And I just hadn't had the heart to cast on sock number two, but I'm resolved to uh, get these done this year. Uh, it's too pretty just to rip out. Come halfway, it's... Um, I need to see it through. <laughs> uh, another project like that is um, another shawl. Seems to be quite a theme here. Um, as I explained on my Finish or Frog It uh, episode, this book was given to me by a Ravelry friend that I met up with in, in London. Um, and we went to a Loop Yarn Shop and she... Um, had given me this book and I wanted to get some yarn to make one of the projects. So I'm just trying to find it in here. Yeah, it's called the Prairie Shawl. It is by um, Juju Vale and Susan Cropper. There's another look at it. And I bought this um, dye for yarn wool silk blend in the Red Rose Losing Its Fire colorway, and I've only just begun. It's one, it looks like that you cast on the long part of the shawl and gradually decrease. I know it has a lot of noops in it, and that might be what sort of put me off for a while, but I, um, it's a good sentimental project, and I'm going to see this one through also, and knit it this year. One more project that I have um, casted, had cast on quite a while ago, a few years ago, uh, not a great picture, but the Belvraid, ha Belvraid Hap. It's actually the half hap that I'm doing. It is by Rita Taylor, and it is in some beautiful Samite yarn from Blacker. It's a silk blend, as you can see. I don't have a lot done. The first step is to knit a big triangle out of garter stitch and I can see all the pins on there marking I think 10 rows or something. I'm not sure. Um, I think because it's just kind of boring at this point that's why it's been lingering so long but this is another project that I just uh, did not want to, to frog and so I've put it on the list <laughs> and uh, intend to turn back to it again this year. Another project that was hibernating was um, Light Ease by Alicia Plummer. And I think I started this, pretty sure it was last year. And um, here's what the top <laughs> looked like. And I had a, a variegated yarn for the bottom, but I actually had the whole body done and one sleeve, but I've lost some weight since I first cast it on. 
and I just found it a bit big. I didn't like, especially it seemed to have a lot of material in this underarm area. So what I have done, actually just last night, I uh, frogged the uh, variegated yarn. I went right back to the yoke. And then I think there's a pin on here. Yeah, I put a pin. That's approximately where I want this raglan to end as far as width goes. And so I'm going to um, revisit this. I'll leave this yoke all done. I'll take it back. I'll, I'll get a stitch count close to the second size instead of the third size that I originally did and go from there. So it might mean working straight a little bit on the yoke before I um, divide for the sleeves. I'm not sure yet, but um, I did decide to salvage this part. No point uh, reinventing the wheel, even though if it won't be quite the same as the second size is knit, it will be good enough. And um, so I intend to re-knit that that sweater because I love the variegated yarn that I chose for the um, bottom part and the sleeves for the body and the sleeves and I love this top top part too so that's one that I've decided to keep on the list or add to the list <laughs> and save um, so um, another uh, yarn that I decided to put on what was was this um, fiber nymph dye works bounce base it's wine o'clock somewhere so after I knit the uh, robin socks this is going to be my next plain stockinette sock cast on and I will keep um, some um, of the other fiber nymph dye works yarns I have in stash here as as plain stockinette socks further down the year but I'm just sort of uh, for the next couple months looking at those ones. Um, my niece recently had a little baby girl and I bought this pattern We Wildflower by Alana Dacos with this really nice uh, yellow yarn with plans to knit this up. Um, I may or may not knit this sweater for her as a gift. I have my eye on some other yarn instead, which would require a different pattern, but I do have plans to knit uh, my new great niece a baby sweater. So that is also gonna happen this year. No rush because with the uh, self-isolation and social distancing, I don't expect to see her anytime soon. So. Um, I've got lots of time to work on that. And finally, um, the new Handmade Sock Society uh, has come out. And so far there have been two patterns that have been released. Uh, luminary Socks and Ambient Socks. And normally I will would knit these in order, but I am dying to, uh, where is it? Ah, where did I put the yarn for this? <laughs> oh dear. Oh no, here it is. I thought I might have left it out in the living room. I am dying to knit with this yarn. It's also uh, from Mid Knit Cravings. I bought that at Knit City in the fall. And this is what it's for. And so, um, when I finish the dorsal socks and the Vicar's Wife, I'm going to use this as my reward. Because once I finish the Vicar's Wife, I can cast on this pair of patterned socks. So I'm holding this out as, um, you know, the carrot uh, for getting me going on with those other socks. So that brings me to the end of my new 20 in 20 list. Um, of course, it is subject to change come uh, next quarter, the end of next quarter, the end of June. But for now, it gives me lots of goals to focus on um, until that point. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this special episode. Um, 
what are your goals for 2020? By all means, uh, come by the um, uh, A Stitch in Time podcast Ravelry group. Uh, you can find under the video, I do have links to my Ravelry page, the Ravelry group page, show notes, and um, Ravel or Ravelry and um, Etsy shop. I have a couple of uh, sock patterns that I have designed that are for sale on Etsy. So um, you can click on those links. Uh, by all means, uh, feel free to leave a comment below if you like the video. Thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. I never remember to say any of that on my regular podcast, but um, anyway, uh, that will be it. So stay tuned. Who knows, there may be another special episode um, in store one of these days. Um, I will see you again on a regular episode very soon. Bye for now.